Welcome back to the lecture of chronic liver disease in children. I'm Dr. Amel Faramawi, professor of pediatrics at James University. This is the last segment of the lecture in which I will explain ascites as a complication of liver cirrhosis and portal hypertension, and I will tell you how to approach a case of hepatomegaly and give you a hint about liver transplantation in children. Ascites, which is pathologic fluid collection within the peritoneal cavity, may be due to hepatic causes, mainly liver cirrhosis and portal hypertension, as well as in bat caeri and venous occlusive disease, in which there is congested liver due to hepatic venous outflow obstruction leading to transudation of acetic fluid. On the other hand, there are a lot of extra hepatic causes of ascites, as ascites may be a part of generalized anasarca in heart failure and nephrotic syndrome, may be due to peritonitis, whether infectious as in case of TB peritonitis or as a part of polycirrhositis in collagen disease. It could be due to lymphatic leak as in case of trauma, post-abdominal operations or congenital anomalies of the lymph vessels. It may be biliary ascites in case of bile duct rupture or urine in the peritoneal cavity in case of uropathy. Hepatic ascites is caused by portal hypertension that leads to congestion and splanking vasodilatation leading to transudation of fluids due to increased hydrostatic pressure. Also decreased albumin synthesis in liver cirrhosis leads to decreased oncotic pressure that results in transudation of fluids. The splanking vasodilatation leads to decreased renal blood flow that will lead to activation of renin angiotensin system that results in high aldosterone level in addition to reduced aldosterone metabolism due to liver cirrhosis. This will lead to salt and water retention and accumulation of fluid in the peritoneal cavity. The diagnosis of ascites is based on clinical examination as well as ultrasound examination for evaluation of the amount of ascites and Doppler to evaluate the patency of hepatic veins, inferior vena cava, and portal vein. Lab investigations for assessment of the liver profile including the albumin and investigations to exclude other causes of ascites. Acetic fluid sample is indicated for calculation of SAG, which is serum albumin acetic albumin gradient. If it is equal to or more than 1.1 gram per deciliter, this indicates that the patient has ascites due to portal hypertension. Acetic fluid chemistry for evaluation of glucose, proteins, and cellular content, and for culture and sensitivity. The treatment of ascites is targeting the factors contributing in acetic fluid accumulation. So bed rest, sodium restriction, and fluid restriction are indicated to minimize salt and water retention. Diuretic therapy using spironolactone, which is anti-aldosterone with or without frosimide. Nutritional support and adequate protein intake in non-encephalopathic patients in order to compensate for the hypoalbuminemia. Hypoalbuminemia must be corrected by albumin transfusion if the serum albumin is less than 2.5 gram per deciliter, as well as during tapping of ascites to prevent rapid reaccumulation of acetic fluid. In case of tense ascites with impairment of breathing, therapeutic paracentesis under complete aseptic condition can be performed. If you are suspecting secondary bacterial infection, which is spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, start antibiotics empirically till the results of culture and sensitivity. You have to monitor the patient for serum sodium, potassium, and assess the amount of ascites by measuring the abdominal girth and the weight of the patient. The coronary stones of assessment of a case of hepatomegaly, as well as every other medical case, are history taking, clinical examination, lab studies, radiological tests, and histopathology. These are some of the points that should be fulfilled in history taking. 
And clinical examination should include, in addition to abdominal examination, neurological examination, cardiac and chest examination. Laboratory studies include specific tests for diagnosis of the underlying illness and testing to monitor the status of the patient. This table summarizes the laboratory and the imaging investigation of chronic liver disease. You can go back to the lecture of cholestasis in units and children for more details. Liver transplantation is a surgical procedure to replace a diseased liver by a healthy one from a healthy donor, most probably a compatible family member sharing the same blood group. As living-related liver transplantation is the only one approved by Egyptian law so far, Cadaveric transplantation is not yet approved. It is the only treatment for irreversible end-stage decompensated liver disease. The liver can be divided to eight segments. Each one has its own branch of hepatic artery, hepatic vein, portal vein, and hepatic duct. For infants, two segments from the left loop are usually removed from the donor and transplanted into the recipient while in older children and adults, four segments from the right loop are required. This table shows the indications of liver transplantation in children, and as you see, biliary atresia is the most common indication of liver transplantation in children. Liver transplantation cannot be done in case of uncontrolled systemic infection causing sepsis, progressive terminal non-hepatic disease, irreversible neurologic disease, unresectable extrahepatic malignancy. Liver transplantation is a major operation that may be complicated by graft rejection, which is the most common complication, primary graft dysfunction, which is the most serious complication, as well as other vascular infection, biliary complications. Patients should receive long-term immune suppression, which increased the risk of infection. Well, this brings me to the end of this lecture. Thank you for listening. I'll be glad to answer your questions in the face-to-face -face session. So until this, be ready.